Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today, I've got something a little extra special for you, something a little bit different. Today, we're going to take a dive into the investors, well, the crypto investors mind. I'm going to be doing a little Q&A with your comments that have come through. Now, before you jump off the video and you don't want to see a Q&A, really take this into consideration considering what section of the market we are currently in. I like to put this down as understanding what other people are thinking in the market, a bit of market sentiment, and seeing how we can also evolve and improve our current position in the market. So make sure you like the video up, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon. Yes, I'm asking you to do that before you have seen the video. It's part of the YouTube algorithm. If that triggers you, don't worry, I've got more things that can do that uh, later on in the video as well. So now that you've done that, Let's have a look at coin market cap. We are sitting at 1.4 trillion. Our halfway point, our 50% level that we've talked about on previous videos is around 1.33, 1.34. So I'm going to be watching that level for the market cap as we continue through, as always, day by day, week by week. Now, if you haven't noticed, I do have some humor in the videos. If you can't handle that, I don't know what I can tell you, but we're going to keep pushing on because I keep doing what I love doing and I hope you are doing the same thing as well. If you're stressing out, make sure you take some time off and reevaluate what you're doing and get your emotional energy bank back in check. Bitcoin, 650 billion. Ethereum, 265 billion. We have seen the market uh, drop a little, well, look, 10%, 9%, BNB, 11%. Overnight, so 24 hours, we are down 5 to 11% with the majors. Uh, the most hit has been uni in the top 20. Uh, everything else is around that 5 to 12%. So let's move over to the crypto fear and greed. We are at 10. Extreme fear has entered the market again. If you have watched the videos over the last few weeks, which I hope you have, uh, we had one on a day and a half ago looking at the ultimate crypto crash strategy. I only got 50,000 views, pretty decent, but you see these other ones that have the words urgent in them getting 100,000 views. This one is a really good video to watch. I'll put it at the end of this video so you guys can click on that again. I did that for this video here so you can see this simple plan. Nothing is 100% as I mentioned in the video, but it's a good one just to watch to give you a bit of an idea of uh, a way to start strategizing and creating a plan that is a little more mechanical than just running off hopes and dreams and fears of the market, which we can see here, extreme fear today, yesterday, and last week. So we got another 21 hours until we get a, a new reading on the market, but I suspect it's probably going to be somewhere in the extreme fear unless we have a big bounce and then maybe we just head back to fear. But nonetheless, thank you very much guys for subscribing to the channel. Moving very close to 180,000 and obviously we go for the big one, the 200k, all thanks to you guys. Let's do an update here before we get into the minds of the crypto investors. So what we've seen over the last 24 hours and today actually in the last few hours is another day down. I was hopeful that we might get a bounce to the 45K, which is our 50% level. We saw one day up, an inside, and then an up day. So it's three days, but it's not as strong because we haven't seen higher highs on each of those days. And now we've again overbalanced from what we just saw. Call it one, two, three days up. Now we've seen one day, two days, three days, and now the fourth day down. So I don't think we're racing off to 50K anytime soon. Uh, that didn't play out. We were talking about that with, not on the channel, but when I was talking with George, another fantastic channel, uh, looking at some um, options, uh, something that was happening with options and potentially squeezing up to 50K. Uh, yeah, that this isn't showing that we're going to run fast to 50K, or at least the probabilities aren't in the favor of it running up that way. But we're getting a little bit of volume come in here again at higher lows. So check out that video from yesterday in terms of a plan. Now let's look at some of the questions and comments inside a crypto investor's mind. This is the interesting part that I wanna go through. So thank you all for your comments on the videos. As I said, I am reading them even if I can't get back to all of them. Would you believe we have a good Karen in the world? This is not a Karen that is going to get up here. Boring equals opportunity. I 100% agree. And I'm going to do another video after this one. So it will come out in the next 24 hours. A really important one to watch. We're going to look at Bitcoin again and just give an update of what we've been talking about over the last six weeks. 
about Bitcoin, all of the signals and the signals were there. But really, why weren't we taking them with full action? We took some we took them with with some action, but we really need to ask ourselves, why not the full action? I just sell out everything at 64,000. I'll have that video coming up, uh, like I said, in the next 24 hours. So we have been looking at the market going sideways. Obviously, we are down 50 plus percent at the moment, but I'm not seeing a V-shaped recovery at this point. I've talked about that already in the weeks gone by. And I'm looking at it like uh, boring. And like yesterday's video was investors leaving. Goodbye, investors. That's the whole point of it. We're getting to a boring stage, which is where we can now make the money. The good time to be buying. It doesn't have emotion involved. It's kind of boring. And if you want emotion involved, go to the races. Go and gamble on something that you can get a quick hit from in the next five minutes to an hour. You know, that is gambling. So if you want that thrill, maybe go watch a gambling channel. I don't know. Let's move on to some of the questions before we get on to the other uh, ideas and the thoughts around mindsets in the space and how we can use them to improve. So if you are liking these videos, let me know. Hit the like button. Let me know in the comments. I am. I, I enjoy this myself. I, do, I enjoy doing something different than uh, sort of, you know, just continuing the repeat because some days are just boring. It's the same thing. But looking at this, I get a better idea what's going on out there. If fragile emotions, paper emotions, all right, I'm saying if you are this kind of person, I, I don't, I'm not trying to have a go at anyone here, all right, so I'm going to start with that, not having a go at anyone here, I had to hold my tongue there, uh, but if you have paper emotions, forget paper hands, don't worry about paper hands, paper hands are going to make you money, diamond hands will make you money as well, it just depends on your plan, but if you have paper emotions, you're probably going to lose time after time after time. If you're unsubscribing because of my shit titles, so be it. You know, this isn't an airport. You don't need to make an announcement. Nonetheless, I appreciate the feedback. If they are shit, okay, I need to improve on them. I'm not a digital marketer, but I will improve. All right, stop the FUD. The videos aren't FUD. They're talking about something that I see is what's happening in the market. And if you aren't sure of how to, how to read a market and you only want to hear positive news, that's going to be quite difficult moving forward in your plan. So that's a simple way to look at some of these uh, emotional, fragile sort of responses. I see them as paper emotions. And if you don't have a diamond emotion, you're probably best to look for another uh, way to make money and another career path. All right, responsibility, action plan. So from one side to the next, these are the good things. This is what happens in, in the mindset of us out here. Okay. Omar says, uh, people who got in more recently are stressed. You sure, perspective. A lot of people did get in in the end of the last bull market, but they've been able to manage and average their way out of losses with good strategies. And this is what I can see in this case. Uh, he basically averaged in until February and paused because of the knee-jerk reaction. So looking forward, I, don't, I, I do wish to, I took more profits, but I don't feel as stressed as 2018. So I see this as like a, precursor to the next bull run in the the long-term macro view of Bitcoin. So even though we are down about 50% at the moment, uh, the long-term outlook for me is still bullish. So this is like a, a pre-run into the next stage. And that's probably what I'm going to talk about mostly in that next video. So if you have an attitude like this, that sure, you could have done better, then you can go back and look at the mistakes and then improve on those for when the next leg of the run happens. I got in almost two months ago, did make a little bit of money before my portfolio got completely wrecked, but luckily I can afford the loss. Just sucks looking at your investment almost cut in half for sure. All right, some more responsibility and action plan. Chris here, a lot of words to say that we are effed. I got a ton of ADA. So basically annoyed at YouTubers. I get that. Uh, no offense, Jason. I like the hopium free content. I get that everyone wants some answers from this and basically you need to take some responsibility as well. And if, if there are YouTubers that are sort of dishing out the, the hopium time and time again, maybe this is a good time to start to cull some of the voices, some of the noise that you're hearing out there and see what has worked better for you over the last 
few weeks, few months, however long you've been investing for and clear out the noise and start to just look at the stuff which is going to improve you as a, an investor and, and a person as well, you know, because they, they go hand in hand. If you're if you can improve yourself, then your investing should come to you as well and vice versa. Improve your investing. You have to basically you have to look at yourself and see what is wrong and you can't blame anyone else. So that's why I like them as personal development and uh, is a great way to earn money. So uh, these are all looking good. It takes full responsibility for investment decisions and I refuse to sell at a loss, but F YouTubers, okay. DCA in time, waiting for a payday. Painfully wish I had listened more to myself. Taking profits, hey-ho, long-term learn from mistakes. So just learning from mistakes, that's a positive side here. Sleep and analysis, probably looking a little bit rough for wear again. I had some great sleep on Friday night. Baby was up all last night again Saturday night so I'm probably going to be wrecked again that's pretty much I just wanted to mention that I know I get a lot of the comments about the sleep and also on my Instagram but yes I have a six month old if you know maybe you're new to the channel and you don't see that but yeah she is a ball of energy recent Bitcoin video as I said if you haven't seen it check out this video after this this is about a Bitcoin strategy something really simple that you can then apply filters on to uh, improve the strategy and then also imply uh, add in some exit strategies. So people are just saying here, strategy really helped. So if you need some ideas or some understanding about what it is about, yes, it's nice and simple and people are finding good value from that video. I'll leave a link to it at the end of this video as well. Amazing strategy. How do you make those signals? Literally just using this and that's a blue, that's just a, a blue arrow. You just click it onto the chart. It's right there over to the side, click the blue arrow here and then click it and put it on the chart. It's that simple. All right, next piece is boring period. So this is the period that we can make some money from. This is the really good part because when you look at risk and reward, more money can be made in the down periods, in the bear markets, in the periods which are boring. If you're buying at these lows, this is all the upside. If you're buying at the, the highs, your upside gets far more limited, like extremely limited especially when you've got, to, uh, you've got to rely on more energy coming into the market. So if you want to get to 100K Bitcoin, from the tops, it's like 70%. But if you're buying it from these lower periods, then you're at 900%. It's just vastly different returns. So be excited for this period that is potentially coming up. I suspect that's what we're going to go through. Probably the noise is going to get less the volume's going to get less. We're going to start to drop off a little bit. Maybe we'll get some pushes down into some $20,000 levels and then start to base out in the 30s to 40s to 25, somewhere in this region. And then you can see that the returns from these levels improve drastically compared to the highs. So just to get back to our 100 grand marker from where we currently are at 34K, we're at nearly 200%. But from the hot, the, the tops, you're at 60, maybe 70%, depending where you bought. So it's it's huge. Stick around for the boring periods. Get excited for the boring periods of the market because you can bet your bottom dollar most people will leave the market because that's why they get boring and get slow. If it doesn't happen and we shoot straight up, great. You know, you sort of make your money back, expect people to take profits because they're scared and they want to get out. That's kind of how a double top happens. But uh, overall, this is the exciting time for me because I feel confident and I feel at ease to be able to buy in and just wait, be patient for the market. But I definitely don't like the feeling about buying at those tops and talked about it in many, many videos. And I'll recap all that in, in a video coming up, like I said, in the next sort of 24 hours. Uh, news and data myths. So the first one here is, I think with all these updates coming for Theta, ETH, ADA, that we'll see a run up next month or for Theta and August for Ada. Basically, there's updates, there's news, there's people talking, there's promises by CEOs, all this sort of stuff. If the market is in a bear market and it looks like it's much easier for it to go down than up at the moment, then even with the news, I'm not expecting big moves. That's just what happens. It, it runs on market sentiment, not necessarily on news. Now, this is my opinion. This is why I trade the markets. That's why I've survived so long in the markets. If you want to run on news, go for gold, all right? But it's much easier to, to run with the tide than it is to go against the tide. And currently, the tide is going out. 
<laughs> it's going out. We're going to get another tide, but it's going out. There's going to be news and stuff like that. I'm not saying that the market can't run. I'm not saying that theta can't go up, but currently you're going to be pushing against the tide if you are waiting on these things to get it back to all-time highs or even past all-time highs. It's just a much harder look at the market. So the other thing is to, to do with uh, myths is data. Looking back at previous bull markets, we do that as a way to see what's happening with history, like I've talked about before. Looking at history is like the market's resume. It doesn't mean that that employee is going to perform exactly the same when they come and work for you. And that's the same thing with the market here. When we're looking at bull runs, you know, the mid bull run did exactly this and then it did exactly that. And it's going to happen exactly the same this time. It's very, very short sighted. It's not an approach that I take to the markets at all because the market will always do just enough to fool you at the top and at the bottom. And so that's why you've always got to be prepared for uh, either way that the market could go up or down or look, even, even sideways. Maybe we just don't get anything and we head sideways. So there's no set rule book. Or so there's no set outcome that the market is going to give you. There's just the probabilities of how these things may happen. So if you get yourself stuck in a mindset of, uh, the market will definitely do this or the market will do this because of news or what we've seen in the past on data. It's a it's a difficult one to get yourself out of. Just just stay fluid and flexible with the outlook. And as I said, I'm not having to go at these people here. That's just their opinions. I'm just seeing a, like explaining how I have experienced these in the past uh, and basically just sharing with you guys. As for manipulation, that's been a big one over the last few weeks, especially with the Wyckoff videos going crazy and people just getting into the Wyckoff state of mind thinking, so this one isn't specifically about Wyckoff, but Wyckoff looking at uh, the structure that we saw at the top and how it played out almost exactly, but then using the Wyckoff method on a four minute chart or a 15 minute chart or a four hour chart, it doesn't work like that. Uh, so that's what I just wanted to mention about manipulation. I'll probably talk a little bit more about another video because this one's already getting long enough. But uh, manipulation, do you realize, uh, et cetera, et cetera, that there's Wall Street doing this and other guys doing that and so on and so forth. Um, look, I appreciate it. You know, no, no disrespect, peace. I'm just explaining what I see here. There's manipulation in every market. Surely you guys see that. There's manipulation everywhere. It doesn't really matter. The point is that you're, you're basically playing a game. If you can understand the rules, then you're going to be able to play it all right. Things work. A lot of things do work. You know, fear, greed, index is not relevant. Things are always relevant. It's just a matter of how much emphasis you put on them. You could say 0% and you're right in this case. You know, if that's your opinion, then you're going to say 0%. Uh, I agree. Look, just keep buying. There has to be a strategy to it. And my strategy, looking at History seemed to work out reasonably well when I just want to take a chunk out of the middle, looking at the plan here in this video, fear and greed, check it out after this video. Uh, so far, it's done reasonably well. All right, Ponzi scheme and investments. We're nearly at the end here. We're looking at stupid people. <laughs> Why do they tell you to hold it? Because everyone cashes out, the Ponzi falls down. That, I've looked at it and looked at crypto market, of course, stock market. Land, the biggest market in the world, land, anything that is investment, you could look at it as a Ponzi scheme. You could look at everything as a Ponzi scheme. If you cashed out of everything and you just had cash, then that would fall or fall down as well. The stock market would fall down. The land market will fall down. Sure, we need somewhere to live. So in that case, we need to have land. But the way it's been built is basically on a Ponzi scheme model. Uh, looking at fractional reserve banking and who gets to own land. You know, it's privatized with with bigger individuals or, you know, bigger bank holds, uh, sorry, bigger uh, uh, wallets, essentially, that can afford to have more land. So I'm not going to throw the whole Ponzi scheme onto everything because it is. And at the same time, you go down that path, then you basically just become a real cynic of everything. So moving on from manipulation and Ponzi schemes, it's, it, you, you just don't want your mind going down that path if you've got a direction of making money and, and making a, a, a good place for yourself in this world. Bear market, in short, we're in a bear market. So it's over, nice. Again, this sort of mindset is probably going to keep you out of a market. 
because you're scared and you're waiting for something else to happen, for everyone to come back in, for all the sheep to pile back in so you can buy at highs. No offense to these guys here, which are anonymous avatars again, but look, you, you get my point here. I hope you do. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts have been over these comments throughout this video. In short, look, I'm waiting for a 50% break as well. We're definitely more in a bearish side than we are in a bullish side. That doesn't take a genius to see that. But I don't think it's going to happen like it did last time. I don't think we're going to see a three-year bear market before we break all-time highs again. It's That's not how it's been every time. And like I said with a previous comment, if you start putting yourself, uh, you know, setting your mind into that direction that we're just going to repeat exactly the same as we have done every other cycle, then you're probably going to fall short of the mark. So stay flexible, stay fluid with your thoughts. Common misunderstandings. Litecoin. I mentioned this in a previous video how, how much garbage uh, Litecoin is and just looking at a dollar value here, went from 40 to 380. I always compare cryptos to their Bitcoin or Ethereum values. And Litecoin has been down against Bitcoin for a very, very long time. Regardless of the dollar value, I want to protect my risk as well. I'm better off buying Bitcoin than Litecoin. Same deal with Ethereum. At first, it was looking okay. We might have had a break, but Litecoin has underperformed extremely. Well, yeah, it's just been a very bad performer this entire bull market. Uh, it doesn't take a genius to see that on a chart. The dollar value, sure, it's gone up, but so has Bitcoin, so has Ethereum, and it's gone up more. So that's what I'm talking about when I look at these. It's a common mis, uh, misunderstanding or misconception that some cryptos are going to do better than others or that, uh, that they have done well. Look at the Bitcoin chart. When you look at it, LTC, BTC, check that out as well. Staking. Why in God's name would I stake in a market like this so I can be liquidated in a few hours? You can't get liquidated from staking. And this might be news to new people, but if you're staking your cryptocurrency, it's not leverage trading. It's not trading on margin or anything like that. It's essentially you hold the cryptocurrency and then you you delegate your holdings to a stake pool. And so basically you're giving them your vote in a kind of roundabout way and that then secures the network. So you're not going to get liquidated from staking. Uh, I, this is the first time I've seen this. So if you guys are thinking that yourselves, uh, yes, it doesn't work like that. So last one I've got here is you're growing on me, Jason Pizza. I used to not like watching you, but you're a good dude and I give and give good info. Thank you very much. I'll leave you guys on some good positive notes. Cheers. That's the staking pool down here. If you haven't already, make sure you follow me on Instagram. Daily Q&A has got more uploaded there today. Twitter, join me over there for news. If you don't have an account, get yourself an account and go follow some, some news articles over there. Go follow some good people. That's going to keep you in the bull market and keep you interested in cryptocurrency. I said bull market, but I mean cryptocurrency. Keep you in crypto throughout this period, whether it is a bear market, whether it's just a sideways period. This is the period that you're going to be making some good coin. So stay with it now. This is the most important time. This is the actually urgent time in the market. Do it. I don't believe you'll regret it. I definitely didn't regret staying with the bear market through 2018 and 19 and 2020. It's turned out extremely well and I can sleep stress-free at night. Found some value from this. Let me know. Hit the like button down below. Bell notification icon after you've hit subscribe. Thanks once again, guys. Make sure you stick around for the end of the video for the Bitcoin strategy plan. I'll catch you at the next one. Until then, have more fun to get more done.